welcome. I'm your host for Sports Talk. I'm Frank Knappenberger, and today we have three very special guests, three student athletes from East Brunswick High School. You've probably been reading about them in the paper, and now today maybe you'll get to see the name with the face. First of all, we have over here, we have Andrew Silver. Andrew's an outstanding basketball player and uh, baseball player. In the middle there is Matt Merrigan, our county champ in wrestling, and he's also an outstanding baseball player. And the young lady is Kelly Sheridan. She's a very diverse athlete. Kelly, you're a varsity cheerleader, an outstanding swimmer, and the manager for the state champion volleyball team. And Coach uh, Rutz tells me that you're the reason they're number one because <laughs> that great job you do. Uh, the first question I'd like to uh, ask is about college. Um, and feel free to speak, ask a question, anything you want. It's a dialogue here. We want those young kids out there to look at you guys as role models. So whatever you feel like saying, just blurt it out. Okay, have you made a decision about college, Andrew? And if so, where are you going to compete in college, and why did you pick that particular school? Um, I chose to attend Rutgers University. I'm going to enroll in the honors program and hopefully major in political science. Um, I chose it because I got a full scholarship, so financially it made sense for me. And also it gives me the opportunity to potentially play club baseball with the hope of possibly trying out for the varsity team. Mm -hmm. They have club baseball at Rutgers. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. Now, I know I spoke to your mom, who's a lovely lady, by the way, and her concern was maybe you were going to go to Johns Hopkins and mm -hmm. pay a couple dollars, but <laughs> you chose Rutgers. Yes. Good choice. Matthew, last I heard, you were thinking about skiing. Uh, well, I chose, I chose to attend uh, the University of Rhode Island um, with aspirations to play, hopefully play baseball, to walk onto the team, mm -hmm. and also, uh, if possible, to uh, club wrestle there. Oh, good. Any type of decision about what you'd like to major in? Well, I know I want, I'm going to undeclared at first, but I, I plan to uh, study uh, business. Good. You'll be good at that. And young lady? Like Andrew, I also plan to attend Rutgers University. I'm an undecided major as of right now mm -hmm. with no plans to play sports competitively. Right. Well, what made you choose Rutgers? Well, I really didn't want to go too far away, so Rutgers seemed like a logical enough. choice. Yes. Close enough. Good. Well, I wish you the best of luck, everyone. And education is a great field, so don't be afraid of switching into education. You'd all be great at it. Uh, Kelly, we're going to go to you first for this one. <laughs> Besides sports, what other activities are you involved in with school, uh, community, school, and is it very difficult for you to get involved with things such because of the time commitment, um, plays or music mm -hmm. or productions or clubs? Well, I'm in the National Honor Society, and that basically includes like community service projects such as tutoring and also the blood drive. Um, I coach cheerleading at St. Bart's for like sixth graders, mm -hmm. so that's fun. And I also lifeguard during the summer. That's pretty busy. Yeah. Do you wish you could have been involved in more things? No, I think my schedule's pretty full. It's pretty full. full. Yeah, time management right. basically keeps it all together. I don't think it's handled much more. Do you think if you had more time that you would be less organized? Hmm. I mean, you've got to budget your time <laughs> now, right? Right. Do you think you'd, if you went home after school, which you uh -huh. never do, what would you be doing? <laughs> I probably wouldn't be doing much, no, right. basically. It, it's proven that, you know, with the athletes, they have to learn to budget time and be organized, and that helps them be more successful. Yeah. Matthew. Um, well, am I, uh, what was the question? The there? question was, that's okay. <laughs> uh, the question was, besides baseball and wrestling, and I know you do a lot of club baseball or travel baseball, and you do wrestling all year round, do you wish you could have been involved in more school activities? and? Or, or are you involved in school activities? Well, um, outside of school, I actually uh, usher church at St. Bartholomew's. Very good. And uh, I also am involved in arranging the flowers for there, which is a connection from uh, my job in the summer, which I was actually delivering flowers at the flower zone. That's pretty good. Yeah, so it's something different. So if you come over to my house, you can make a nice arrangement for me? Well, I can do the best I can. Oh, okay, good. Best. That's good, a little diversity. And Andrew. Uh, like Kelly, I'm a member of the National Honor Society. Uh, I'm also a member of Spanish Honor Society, Model United Nations, and I participate in the IPL II program, which although not an extracurricular activity, 
has that feel because most of the work is done outside of school. Man, I, I always see in the hallway pretending you guys are working, <laughs> you just stand in there looking at everyone go by. Give us a give the audience a thirty second on the Apple program. Where are you going? What I know something big is happening. This 30 seconds. Um, actually, a week from today, April 30th, we'll be leaving for Washington, D.C. to compete in the national competition. Uh, we've worked hard for the entire school year learning concepts about the Constitution um, and basically preparing statements to give to a panel of experts on those topics. And uh, it's extremely competitive, but it's been fun and very rewarding. Time consuming. Very. The other schools, obviously, we're always the, not always the best, but we're pretty much mm -hmm. on top. Is that because we do we start that in September? When do you start that? What's that whole process? Real Actually, quick? the process has really started in June of your junior year. Um, we're given a reading assignment over the summer, as well as an essay to write, and that's where you start to learn some of the concepts that you're going to utilize during the the course of the year. Um, from that point on, from the first day of September and from the first day of school, uh, we're just preparing to get ready for the state competition, which, as you said, uh, we won in February, and after that, it's uh, preparing for nationals. Well, good luck to you guys. Thank you. Um, I'm big on diversity in sports. Kelly's got a lot of different sports. You're going to ask, you're going to be the first one, Matthew. Um, you think, because I know you used to play football, do you think it's best for an athlete to specialize in one sport, concentrate on that, or to do as many as you can, like maybe Kelly? Well, I think it'd be better for an athlete to uh, play a variety of sports because it builds more character. You get to see more like uh, values of competition, and it's just better all around. You get to meet new people, mm -hmm. especially in high school. It's pretty That's important. Good point about the socialization there. If you were on the brink of a scholarship type athlete, say basketball, and you were a good baseball player, would you give one up if you saw that you could possibly scholarship? Um, well, I would try my best not to give one up. However, I would try to focus on the one that I was on the brink of the scholarship of getting. Mm -hmm. So maybe focus more on maybe participating like, like uh, maybe summer and try to play more like all year round with that. It's a good political answer. If it's like him, you should be going down with him, avoiding that answer. <laughs> um, of your two sports, I'd never asked. What, what is your favorite? All right. Well, my favorite sport to play would be baseball in the game, but. I really can't like overshadow wrestling because I do enjoy like the pride of actually just winning and the victory on the mat is just right because it's one on one. I think you enjoyed when you won the county champ conference championship in the last seconds and the, the, uh, the scattery exploded. I guess you'll never forget that feeling. Huh? Uh, that is unforgettable. Yes. Yeah, great. Okay, now you're very you're all over the place, cheerleading, swimming, which doesn't make. There's no like connection like no. soccer and, <laughs> and maybe a basketball player with foot speed. Tell me how you got interested and what do you think about the specialization part? Well, I got interested in swimming at a young age. I was about Which eight you? years old and I started a sw summer swim team. Cheerleading came more with the social aspect when I was in like fifth grade about. Well, all my, cheer all my friends started cheerleading. So that's basically how I got involved with that. And I think it is better for children especially to get involved with like a variety because you could see like what you like, what your abilities are. Mm -hmm. So I think that's important. Yeah, I think it comes to a certain time in your career, maybe junior year or something, mm -hmm. or maybe you should concentrate. Mm -hmm. Would you, how much of a better swimmer would you be if you swam <laughs> every day, three hours a day? I don't think, I think I would get sick of swimming personally. Mm -hmm. I'm not a person that can just like focus on one thing and like be happy. Like I think I need like a lot of things to be like, like keep me ha like satisfied. Right. So I think that I'd probably give it up after a while. I like just swimming, like the one good, season. Good perspective. Andrew? Um, I'm definitely a proponent of playing a variety of sports. I think the best advice I ever received was from actually Coach Henning, uh, my basketball coach, who told me that I should definitely not focus on one sport, that I should just enjoy what I'm doing and have fun with it. Um, I think that it's important to play a variety of sports. Like Matt said, you meet a lot of new people. Uh, some of the friendships that I made through sports, I'm going to have my entire life, and they've been invaluable to me. Yeah. When when people ask me that, and you can react to this comment if you want. Some kids, if they don't concentrate, they'd never make the team. Right? If you didn't concentrate on basketball, you'd never make the team. You know? Is it okay for that kid then? You see what I'm saying? You got a reaction to that? You know, you would get cut in all three sports, but all of a sudden you say, I'm going to concentrate 
everything I do on basketball because I make the team. Reaction? I think it's a personal decision for everyone. Like, I don't think that you can, there's just like a blanket like answer to say, oh, well, like whatever works for you, right. I think. And that's, that's, that's exactly right. Very good. Very good. All right, here's a good one. I, I think I'm going to get these answers. Forget the sport you're involved in. If you could be a superstar in any other sport, what would it be and why? You can be a superstar <laughs> in any sport you want. Uh -huh. And why? Well, since, che when, since gymnastics is like a fundamental part of cheerleading, we took classes in the off season. And it was something that I really enjoyed. Like I saw like the other gymnasts, and it seems like a really like difficult sport, it's something that you have to start when you're young. So I think I'd have to say gymnastics. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. Well, we, yeah, the things that some of the things they do are like absolutely amazing. Right. So I think that's the training on that's very tough. Well, yeah, yeah, that too. Andrew, um, I think I definitely want to be a superstar in golf. Um, I know I try and go out on the weekends and during the summer, and um, not very good, but I always have fun with it. And I think that it would be, uh, it'd be very nice to be able to know that I could go out there and hit the ball well every time and you know, be that's very good at golf. That's interesting. Golf never. Got that. All right, I'm going to try to guess from Matthew. Swimming, oh, bocce man. ball. You have to guess incorrect right there. <laughs> I have to agree with Andrew, actually, being, I would like to be a superstar in golf. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a new sport that I actually just recently picked up and playing this summer. And uh, it seems like a great sport to be, like, you know, a superstar at. Bet you're pretty good at it. What are you shooting now? Do you oh, I played 18 holes once in my life, and I shot a 110, so it's that not too bad. bad but That's better than me. Probably, probably better than though. Mr. Henning, too. <laughs> I, I always struggle with uh, role models. Uh, you hear about good athletes that, like, that say, I'm not a role model and I don't want to be a role model. So my first question to you is, should athletes be a role model? Should professional athletes be a role model? Andrew? I think whether professional athletes like it or not, little kids look up to them and emulate them. So I think that in that sense, they have to be role models. They need to, to behave the correct way, both on the field and off the field. Um, people like Kobe Bryant and the situation that he's in, little kids see that and he's their hero. And I think that professional athletes need to use better judgment at times because these little kids do look up to them. Mm -hmm. Good. Matthew? Oh, I have to agree with Andrew there. I totally agree that. Uh, you agree with everyone athletes. but me. What's going on? <laughs> oh, I'm here? sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean like that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just professional athletes are always on television and everything. There are role model little kids. Little kids love watching television, they're just always on. And it's just like, it's very important for them to act right. Yeah. Kelly? It takes a lot of determination to be like a professional athlete and get where they are today. So I think it's important for little kids to see that and say, oh, well, maybe that can be me one day. So I think they should be role models. Yeah, it's a tough call, but uh, it seems like we need more of the Derek Jeters, or I'll give you the Boston shortstop. I don't, f I don't remember his name, but that's okay. Uh, we need more of those. I think there's more of the other people going on the other way. Garcia Parra. All right. Um, do you consider yourself a role model for these little fifth, sixth, seventh graders, ninth graders? What do you think, Matthew? Well, I never really thought about it much. However, I guess you could say I do consider myself a role model because, like, I try to do the best I can to like give the best image I can to uh, all the people younger than me, even the people that look up to me, like my cousins, mm -hmm. people in our school, because yeah. like I'm a representation of my family, of the East Brunswick High School, right. like all our teachers out there. It's important to give the best image you can and actually be the best you can be. That's a good point about the relatives and that. And uh, I am sure there are kids that want to be just like you to win a conference championship uh, as a singleton all by yourself is, is quite an accomplishment. So I'm sure there's a lot of kids saying they want to be just like you. Andrew? Um, I would like to say that I consider myself a role model. Uh, whether I'm participating in a game and just trying to to be, you know, show myself in a good light on the court, or whether it's trying to show a teammate, you know, the proper way to behave, the proper way to work hard in the off season, to make sure that you're in the best possible shape, um, to have that drive and, and determination. Mm -hmm. I think that I'd like to serve as a role model for it, other it, teammates it, and for it, other There's people. kids out there that reading that you had three or four RBIs the other day. Matt came in, struck out the bases, loaded. You had two saves in a row. You had a good Saturday, right? Uh, two Saturdays ago. I do my best, you know. Oh, now we're modest. And it is. <laughs> now, that's save. okay. He had a heck of a day. But tell us what he did. He had a save? He had a save in the first game, and then he was the winning pitcher in the second yeah, game. Yeah, that's in one day. Very yeah. good. Kelly, now to me, 
a young lady out there looking at you, and she's a cheerleader, she's a swimmer, and she gets involved by, you know, being involved with, well, why are you involved in volleyball? Let's ask that question first. That well, doesn't do with the guys, I hope. No. Good. Well, one of my friends decided that she wanted to manage volleyball, and since Gen X is a coach, I figured that this would be like a good way to like still be involved in the spring season. Mm -hmm. Well, because like my sophomore year, and I didn't do anything in spring, like I was lost, like I don't know what to do, like I sat right. at home. So I figured this would be like a good way to like get involved and say, all right, I'm going to do something in the spring. T tell uh, tell the people out there exactly that you know it's not nerdy. You guys still use that word, nerdy. <laughs> to be a manager or a statistician, tell us exactly what you do and how you're treated with the, by the team and the players and whatever. Well, the team treats us pr like very well. Like they respect us. They say, well, you know, like because we we sit with the team, like we feel like we're part of the team. Mm -hmm. Like we take um, what well, we take to s the stats. You can't say statistics. Eh, not <laughs> Keep <really>. going. <laughs> and that's basically. Who calls the games in? Hmm? Who calls the results into the game? Oh, See, well people out there don't <laughs> understand how the results of the game get to the newspaper. Well, we take the results. You take them. We give them to Coach Rutz, and he's the one that calls them into the newspaper. Right. But they're, they're the ones that we take. Like because that. it's important to know that if uh, Matthew had six strikeouts, yeah. seven strikeouts, or someone mm -hmm. had Tony had seven kills or something. Right. Okay, that's good. Next one's going to be, like, who, besides me, who is your favorite athlete and mm -hmm. why? Okay, and when you think about, you know, I want you to expand on that. So there's got to be something there that you admire after him. Speaking of Derek Jeter, Derek Jeter believes you, you should have a lot of role models. You know, take this from one athlete and this from another athlete. He doesn't believe in just that you need to have just one. So if you have two role models out there, <laughs> you're going to be the first one, Matthew, because you're giving me that look. Um, role model or role models. Uh, well, I'd say my uh, my role model would be the uh, quarterback of the Atlantic Falcons, Michael Vick, because I've been keeping in touch with him since uh, he was the college quarterback at uh, Virginia Tech, and he's worked so hard, and he's not really conceded or anything. I mean, he just overcome an injury from last fall, mm -hmm. and I'm sure that he's going to be back for this fall to uh, partake in a good season. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he's always been he's always been working his heart out, and you yeah. know, he just he does anything to win, basically. And now, how did you get attached to him? I mean, by reading about him, watching him on the tube, or what's the connection there? Well, it'd actually be both of that. I'd read about him in the ESPN magazine. I'd watch him on ESPN all the time. And the funny thing is, ironically, he's a lefty as well as I am, too. So it's just something we had in common. Yeah, yeah. And it kind of clicked at first. That sometimes that happens. Yeah. Yeah. Kelly? Well, if I had to pick a favorite athlete, I would say Mia Hamm, just because she's, I think she's one of the most like strongest female athletes out there. And there's countless girls that look up to her, so I'd mm -hmm. have to say her. What is she in her 30s? And she's playing against like Heather O'Reilly, who's a Q's 20 something. Yeah, so she's a pretty her. outstanding athlete. Andrew, um, what do you got? I actually have two. I have uh, Jerry Rice, uh, just because he was a lower draft pick, wasn't that heralded out of college, went to a small school, but he was able to persevere and become the greatest wide receiver in the history of the NFL. Um, also, Albert Pujols, the first baseman for the St. Louis Cardinals. Um, he's only been in the major leagues for three years, but he's been incredible. Uh, there hasn't been a letdown, and I try and model my swing after his because I think that he just has one of the most pure swings in the game. It's interesting. And what, how did you pick up on him as your idol or? Um, like Matt said, I mean, I watch ESPN all the time, and he was always on there. And I saw that he would consistently hit the ball hard. Uh, hit a lot of base hits, and he's also a very clutch player. Uh, he comes up big for the Cardinals when they need it, so mm -hmm. it was uh, it was natural for him yeah. to be my hero. Since we're on baseball, which may be my favorite sport or one of mine, you're going to get to answer this real quick. Pete Rose, should it be allowed in the Hall of Fame? Should it be allowed in baseball? Both or none? Matthew? Well, I would like to say it should be allowed in both. I mean, the Hall of Fame is... It's not all about like what you did after, you know, what you did like behind the scenes, like did you bet on baseball? It's about the stats, you know, or about how you played the game. I mean, clearly his stats show that he's been one of the best players in the history of the game. Therefore, he should be a Hall of Famer. Um, do, you, do you know the whole story, Cal? No. <laughs> he bet on baseball as a manager. He was told not to bet on baseball. He, he denied 
that he bet on baseball. Now it's been proven that he did. Now he wants to get into the Hall of Fame. And they threw him out of baseball, not to let him in. So your answer's next. All right, I'll think about it. Um, I would have to agree with Matt. I think that Pete Rose should be reinstated and allowed into the Hall of Fame. Uh, many of the men in the Hall of Fame currently had transgressions in the past that were overlooked to allow them in. And I think that for the accomplishments that he had on the field and the way that he played the game with the passion and the heart, I think that he really deserves to be in the Hall. The most sacred thing about baseball is don't gamble. Don't mm -hmm. bet on baseball. I don't have an opinion on this, but Kelly? Well, what I know about the situation, Good. I would say that he shouldn't be allowed in. Should not? No. Because if you let him in, you're just setting an example that, oh, this is okay and that anybody can do it. So. Thank you. We were, we were just talking no. about role models before. <laughs> right, right. So it goes along with that. Good. Well, it's, that debate's going to go on forever. <laughs> and if they let, no, I'll get to that later. In 10 years, because we're running out of time here, in 10 years, where, where do you see yourself, Kelly? In 10 years, I will have a college degree, and I'll hopefully be happy with my career choices. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. Mm. <laughs> well, in 10 years, I hope to uh, earn a degree at the University of Rhode Island in business, and I hope to uh, be uh, own, uh, kind of like co-own a corporation with my brother in accounting, because it's always been his dream as well as my dream. So it would be really nice, because we get along neat. well. American Incorporated? American Incorporated would be nice. But. All right, but wait a minute. You can't be equal. Who would be 51? Who would be 49? Well, I'd like to say maybe it'd be like 51.8, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah, can't be that strict, you know, 51.49. What company? What would you want to make, manufacture? Baseballs? No. Uh, maybe something like in uh, reference to athletics would be nice. Mm -hmm. Good. In, um, in 10 years, I'll hopefully have graduated from Rutgers. Um, hopefully in 10 years. <laughs> in 10 years, I'll have graduated from Rutgers, uh, then proceeded to law school and be a lawyer. And uh, like Kelly said, I just want to be happy in whatever current choice I, uh, I choose. So you can represent his company. Exactly. We have it all worked out. <laughs> oh, you do? Yeah, that's a fun. Why didn't you be like a sports agent, something like that? Never thought of that? I, I, in recent years, I've thought about that a lot more. Yeah. Good. All right. It's a tough one. You've got to come up with a different one. You've got to come up with an A and a B. Your fondest memory, first mm -hmm. about athletics, then about high school. Hmm. Well, my sophomore year, my relay made it to individual states. We qualified. And that was a really good experience. Not only did we get to, like, compete, but we also got to see, like, the top swimmers in the state. And it was really competitive swimming. So that was a good time for me. All yeah, right. Um, of school? Hmm, that's a tough one. Not there yet? <laughs> Not there that's yet. That's right. <laughs> um, when you go to an athletic event, like our philosophy is we'll play to anyone, anytime, any place best competition you know you've got I've seen it last year we played all those schools in baseball and in wrestling we go against anyone in swimming um, does that motivate you as an athlete to see the best players out there like I think your sophomore year we played St. Anthony's in hoops didn't we or you were a freshman uh, then I think I was a freshman, a freshman. so how was that does that does that help motivate you as a athlete when you see wow that's that's so and so mm -hmm. he's the best in the state I think it would motivate anyone to see the, like, the times that they have, like what somebody's like, able to accomplish. I think that motivates me. Yeah. Because sometimes as I'm scheduling games, I'm saying, are we doing the right thing here? Do we want to play you know, a game that we'd almost have to play perfect to beat? Uh, but OK, fondest memory. We know wrestling has got to be the number one. Well, it's the pin, right? I have the to pin. agree. I'm going to call it the pin from now on, Matt. The when pin I see, the I'm just going to say the pin, we know what it means. Well, the pin in the GMC finals, I have to say yes, would be my finest athletic memory. Right. But um, my fondest school memory, I say it would have to be my most recent report card. Good. <laughs> and that was all A's. That was all A's and one B. Right. One B being in math class, but that's usually, uh, usually a C, but oh, there you go. I boosted it up. So like, I could honestly say that I improved in every class. Good. And it's been my best, I say, quarter report card in a while that I can remember. Right. My other American pin story, what's the other one? Would that be the one against South River in my sophomore year? That, uh, your third one. <laughs> oh. Okay, I got three American pins. I don't know if I can guess the other one right now. Oh, come on. At our place, last match of the day. 
Uh, would that be the, the Christian Brothers Academy CBA, match? Yeah, yeah. We so the audience knows Matt had a pin for us to win. It was the last match of the day. We were down five. You were down five. And, and a five. pin actually counts as six points right. for the team scoring wrestling. So that gave us six points and the victory, and the, the place just exploded. Okay, uh, Matt, uh, Andrew, fondest memory so far? Uh, my fondest memory came during my freshman year when the freshman basketball team won the county championship for the first time in school history, and they haven't won it since. So it's oh, something okay. very special to me. All right, now, you know, you said something. See, I've uh, been here 28 years. It's not the first time. Uh, he was coaching at the time, so, and then that freshman team mm -hmm. won our first county championship ever. Well, the sources that were given to us that year told us that we well, were the first they take you, Well, it was uh, guys like Seattle who went to Princeton, Zahn who went to John Hopkins, Berliner went to Lehigh, um, Forte, our quarterback, that mm -hmm. team won the county championship that year, and as freshmen they won it also. Okay, we're running out of time. Do you have any quick questions? Um, about the athletic program or department. If not, we'll just move on to something else. What is it like to schedule all those events for each team, like each season? Like, is each it difficult? In, it's difficult because you don't want to put your team at a disadvantage. It's like baseball's got a day off today. Mm -hmm. And do you go four in a row, five in a row? Five. Five in a row, and, and that was and, and the kids get tired so you've got it when you do schedule it you want to give them a break mm -hmm. because the body breaks down and certain rules prevent you from scheduling too many baseball can go five in a row basketball can't go three a f more than two in a row they can go three in a week but they can only go uh, two in a row so there are restrictions and you want to give your team the best chance to win and then you got to kind of work out the homes in a way so there's a lot of look a lot of it to be looked at. Um, well, guys, I appreciate I appreciate you coming in and sharing with us. Hopefully, the young men and uh, women out there were able to learn something about you. I did. I enjoyed it. Uh, I've seen you guys all throughout your athletic career, and uh, I really enjoy watching you guys. You're a credit to your family and the school, and we and we do appreciate it. We wish you the best of luck, and hope you finish the. A state championship, conference championship in baseball. You were that close last year, and the boys' volleyball team needs you out there for another state championship. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you. Well, with that being said, this is Frank Knoppenberger uh, thanking you, and uh, good night.